Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better. Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, so like my previous episodes, I'll do my best with the pronunciations here. I relied on Google Translate to provide them and I created my own phonetic spellings to help me do my best. I'll definitely stumble a bit, but it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third. Yes, I know, I've repeated the same thing over and over and over. That's because it's a script. Anyway, this is the fourth free sample of seven total wines from the Alentejo region of Portugal that I'm gonna be reviewing. I'll be reviewing the 2016 Cartucha Red. The winery is part of the Fundação Eugenio Jameda. It is a charitable organization founded by Vasco Maria Eugenio Jameda in 1963. They work in the town of Eovora to promote cultural, educational, social, and spiritual goals focused on enhancing human achievement and overall development of the region. The foundation's actual webpage is in Portuguese only. In addition to the winery, the foundation is also involved with a number of other brands and events. I'll let you explore those on their website. Next to the winery is the Cartucha Monastery, known as Cartucha Santa Maria de Scala Coeli. It is part of the history of the company. It was built for the Carthusian order between 1587 and 1598 by Archbishop Teotonio of the House of Brancansa. The kings of the Brancansa dynasty later financed embellishments for the church. The church was declared a national monument in 1910. The monastery is close to Eivora and is regarded by locals as one of Eivora's artistic and spiritual treasures. In 1834, revolutionary forces expelled the Carthusians along with all other religious orders. The state then took ownership of the monastery and then used it as part of the city's school of agriculture where the monumental church was turned into a grain store. However, it was rescued in 1871 when Eugenio Jameda family acquired the ruins. In the mid-20th century, Vasco decided to restore the monastery and return it to the Order of St. Bruno. In 1960, the Carthusian monks returned to the monastery at the invitation of the Eugenio Jameda family. The winery itself belonged to the Jesuits in the 16th century. They set up a college and a university in Eivora. The building is called Quinta Givalbo, and it was used to house the teaching Jesuits. In 1759, the Jesuits were expelled from Portugal. I guess that was the precursor to what happened in 1834. Anyway, the state took over the property. In 1776, a wine press was installed in the building. In 1869, the great-grandfather of Vasco bought the estate at an auction, and it became known as Casa Agricola Eugenio Jameda. His son, Carlos Maria, expanded the production of the winery and eventually became the Cartucha Winery. In the 1990s, the winery was enlarged and updated. They have four places where they have vineyards. Now, I found three of them. First, of course, is the first one on their Valbo estate. They also built a new winery near the town of Pinedus, meaning pine trees. It is a modern winery that uses gravity to move everything. That means no pumps. A third one is the Alamo da Horta. I couldn't find the fourth one that they just call Cajitu. They have over 400 hectares under vine. They hand harvest all the white grapes and about 75% of the reds while they machine harvest the rest. They do, they do a lot of work in the vineyard to grow the best quality grapes they can. They use a drip irrigation system. Uh, they also use chemical treatments only when necessary. They produce a lot of wines spanning over nine different labels. This wine is part of the core brand Cartusia. By the way, if you try to view each wine brand on their site, nothing really comes up. Luckily, Creative Palette, who supplied the wine, has a tech sheet for me. All right, so let's see the stats on this wine. All right, so the 2016 Cartusia Chintu, 25 bucks suggested retail price. 
first vintage was 1986. It's part of the Alentejo DOP, the Eovora subregion. Soil is granite and schist. Vine age is over 30 years. 40% Aragones, 40% Alicante Boucher, 20% Trincadera. Aging is 12 months in French oak, not sure what percentage is new. Aged nine months in bottle prior to release. The ABV is 14%, total acidity is 5.7 grams per liter, pH is 3.79, and the RS is a very low 1.2 grams per liter. So let's get into the wine. I'm really interested to check this out because a lot of these wines, especially with Alicante Boucher, has you know had a really like a sweetness of fruit, even though the wine is technically dry. Okay, I can kind of smell it. All right. So again, a much of the same as the last few episodes. You know, I think it's more blue fruit dominated again, just like this kind of blueberry, but red raspberry, blackberry. Black raspberry, a little plum, prune, fig, touch of sweet with sweet tobacco, cedar box, cigar box, a little bit of vanilla, clove, allspice, baking spices. I get a little touch of herbaceousness. I mean, it smells really good. Let's taste it. Oh, it's totally dry. I mean, you taste the fruit, and it's it ripe in nature but it doesn't have like as much of a sweetness of flavor as some of the other ones, but it's not like, it's not like bitter dry, but you really, there's a dryness, it kind of dries the mouth and you get the tannins really kind of hitting it on the tongue and also on the, on the gums with most of the other ones was on the gums. This one's really kind of hitting the tongue a little bit, but all the fruit's still there. The blue fruit, the red fruit, the black fruit, everything I just mentioned, Again, a touch of like a sweet tobacco, more of a cedar box, cigar box type of thing. I mean, this one it smells and kind of tastes a little more refined than some of the other ones that I've been I've been uh, reviewing the last few weeks. It's a little more subtle, a little more elegant, a little more polished. There's more subtlety to this wine. This is the wine you can kind of just kind of chill and be like, yeah, man, I'm going to like enjoy this. Not that the other one, I look over, the wines are over there. Not that you can't enjoy those other wines. You totally can. But those other wines for me were like just something that, not quaffable, but like, like, yeah, man, I'm going to drink this wine. Like I'm going to like, like taste good. Like you want to just drink and drink. Not like, like in a bad way, but you just want to drink that wine. This one you kind of want to like savor. All right. I get a little more to the, the cigar tobacco is coming a little bit more. I'm getting the allspice. I'm getting some cinnamon, getting some clove, a touch of vanilla, not a lot. What's the alcohol in this? 14. You can feel it a little bit. You can kind of feel the alcohol on it. It's not like super powerful, but it might be closer to 14 and a half or 15. You can kind of feel it. It's definitely a very tasty one. I like this wine a lot, like a lot. Thank you, Creative Palette, for sending me some of this stuff. It's really good. Yeah, if you find this wine, totally get it. I mean, buy it. It's 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 good. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. Uh, again, if you are enjoying what I'm doing here, then please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and then tell your friends. And until next time, hope you have an empty glass too.